Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about using Material UI components as opposed to using CSS. So let's get into it. So the other day I had this story I was working on. It was not a big thing. I was just setting up a form, putting some fields into, you know, a, a layout basically. Submitted it, everything was peachy. And then my manager comes back and kind of says, well, you know, Frederick, you know, there are, I can see here, there are some alignment issues and there's so, some inconsistencies with the way that we may want to work and we should probably use something like this. And he links me a page on the Material UI documentation. Now, for those of you who don't know that, that's a React implementation of Material Design that is, it's very, very big. Like it's extremely well developed and so forth. I, I, it's, uh, I highly recommend it for you if you're doing React development and you want to have a, like a working framework of some sort of standardized components. It's very useful for that. But that, and he kind of showed me the way that they do that, where they usually, where, where they basically have what they call grid tags, where the grid tags allows you to express how many columns, how many elements and so forth you want on a row. Now, where have I seen this sort of thing before? Well, I've seen it in Bootstrap, I've seen it in Foundation, I've seen it in Ink, I've seen it in, well, basically all of the CSS frameworks have this idea of a grid and having this ability to do layout and so forth. So I kind of sat back there and I thought about this for a moment. So one of the things that I have had li a little bit of an issue with is this idea where the, and this is something that I'm sorry to say that React is, uh, I honestly, I'm a little bit on the fence here. There are pros and there are cons to this. And I just want to air some thoughts about this because this is, like, I actually took my coworker to my side and like I just showed him the, the idea behind this, this grid and I explained my, like, my viewpoint on this. So, the problem I see with having this level of components, now the way that I'm accustomed to working when it comes to React and all these SPS frame, SBA frameworks, is that you use them to actually express something that is inherently difficult for you to, to produce in just plain old JavaScript. This will be your components. In other words, the components themselves are usually, and rendering out these components to the DOM is usually the thing that is complicated. But when you get to into this habit of, of inlining even layout into that, into this tree structure, what you're in essence doing is the same sort of thing that I think is, it, it's weird to the point where it almost hurts me. Because think about this, like, let's just, let's go to good old HTML back in the day. So using these, this grid layout system with these grid tags will literally produce a layout that actually uses more markup. In other words, what you're doing is that you're using markup or HTML to do your layout, your styling for you. You're basically using that instead of using CSS. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, maybe there's no problem. Maybe there is a big problem because what you inherently do, do is that you add more complexity to your, to your DOM structure in order for you to do the layout. In other words, you're taking away the idea that with CSS or st style sheet specifically, it was a, there was actually a time, guys, when you needed to inline the CSS as well. But since then, we've moved on to using style sheets. Now that was the whole concept of these. So you could extract that out and actually have the styling as a separate thing. So you didn't have to concern yourself when you were reading your HTML. But with this approach, you're actually doing the, quite the reverse. Now in this scenario, I, I actually argue, argue that frameworks such as Bootstrap has done it more correctly where you have style tags, which you can use in order to express this. Now this is of course just one of my personal opinions, but what I like to consider when I think about this is that, all right, so you are now adding more JavaScript, there's more re-rendering going on, in other words, there are more DOM elements. You also have more code, in, like in plain one, you, you, instead of having a CSS style sheet with selectors, you now have a grid system. And especially if you want to express a very complicated grid, you might get a little bit of an issue. 
Now, my coworker expressed something that I think is fairly accurate because it's not that long ago we got the concept of CSS Grid. You, hopefully, you've heard about it. And I actually introduced my coworkers to this concept for this very reason, because the idea that you need to use these complicated structures in order to express a grid is no longer really valid. At least not for us, since we use a fairly modern minimum browser requirement for, for the application, right? And so we talked about it and he said, yeah, maybe this is a little bit weird. And then I kind of stopped and I said, the one thing that I can see here that is really useful with this is that it's going to be very consistent. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the fact is that I've never, and I'm sorry to say this, I've never been in a project where the, the maintainers of the projects have ever respected CSS enough to be consistent with it. If, you, if you, I ask you to set up a form, you will most likely set up, put up your style, your way of working, your way of naming CSS classes and all that stuff, and the way that you like to structure the DOM or the HTML, if you will, in order to achieve that goal is going to very likely be different from my approach to do it. That is just a f like that's just me seeing my like with work experience, because we ne for some reason I don't know why this is because. This concept of having a grid tag system is literally the same thing. It is just you standard saying that, all right, in order to achieve this very generic type of thing that we do all the time, a grid in this scenario, Bootstrap has done this for a long, long time. We will simply say that, okay, we will have a predefined set of rules, standardized components, if you will, to do this for us. And then that's it. Now you can do that with CSS as well, but this time we're doing it, you know, in material UI, they're using it through the tag system in order to do it instead. And this is what I was saying to my coworker. Like the, the problem, that, the fundamental problem that we're solving with this is that we will be consistent. We, it's very easy for us to just plug these things in, standardize them, and then we don't have to think about it so much. Because once again, because we don't have a standard for how to actually make a grid in our project, this will actually help us. The question I want to pose here, is this really the way we want to go? Do we really want to create a tag system in order to achieve something that we should have just declared at, 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 like at the CSS level? Because I'm not convinced that it's a good idea to do the thing that people are doing. You know I've been saying this. People are adding more stuff to the DOM, like in, especially in React Land, more stuff to Webpack, more things that Babel needs to transpire. This is just more and more stuff. We're just adding stuff on top of everything in order to... I, it almost feels like we have component addiction. It's almost like we forgot that, you know, there are best practices that are standard. And if you do, the, do, the, do them correctly, they will do just as fine. And I don't think that using this approach is the right way to go. I think the right approach is to standardize your CSS and hopefully use CSS Grid to achieve this because it will not add the same sort of weight to your project and the same sort of complexity. On the other hand, maybe it is necessary because it might just be that difficult to get people to understand that naming things in CSS correctly and respecting CSS and the selectors that you create as much as your code, well, that might be a very tricky thing, I'm sorry to say. We'll see how it plays out. Have a great day.